Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we are going to be performing a fundamental stock analysis of Atmos Energy Corporation, ticker symbol ATO. We're looking at Atmos Energy today because they are a dividend aristocrat. They've consecutively increased their dividend payments for each of the past 35 years. This has been a company that's been able to sustain itself through thick and thin and has reliably and consistently delivered returns to shareholders over that time period. Currently, Atmos Energy is trading just shy of $100 per share. Their shares are currently trading for $99.39. Over the past year, their stock price is up 15%, which is in sharp contrast to the overall market during this time. Over three years, their share prices are down 7%, again contrasting the market over this time. Over five years, they're up at a rate of 4.5% compounded annually. Over 10 years, things are looking even better. They're up at a rate of 11% compounded annually. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, Atmos Energy's stock price has compounded at a rate of 8% annually. That rate of return is not including dividends, and currently they are paying out a 2.7% dividend yield. So that yield would be added to this compound annual return. So it looks like Atmos Energy has been delivering above 10% returns to shareholders over the past 18 years or so. So shareholders in the company have done quite well over this time. In addition to that, Atmos Energy's dividend yield at 2.7% is above that of an S&P 500 ETF right now. So Atmos Energy is trading in between their 52-week high and their 52-week low. They're a little closer to their low. Currently, 4.5% of their shares outstanding are sold short, and they have a $14.5 billion market cap. Now for some background about the business, Atmos Energy is a gas utility. They are the largest publicly traded, fully regulated, pure play natural gas utility in the United States, serving more than 3 million customers in Texas, Colorado, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Virginia. About two thirds of its earnings come from Texas, where it distributes natural gas in Northern Texas and owns an intrastate gas pipeline spanning several key shale gas formations and interconnects with five storage facilities. As of last year, Atmos Energy owns 72,000 miles of underground distribution and transmission mains and 5,700 miles of gas transmission lines. Atmos Energy Corporation was founded in 1906 and is headquartered in Dallas, Texas. So for our fundamental stock analysis today, we are going to be performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Atmos Energy based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress and it's an opportunity to learn in public. It's going to continue to evolve and improve over time. So with that said, let's get right into today's analysis. Starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the past five years to be above 14%. So there are a couple of reasons for this. The first is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. And the second is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is going to return approximately what its underlying business returns. And these business returns are captured here by return on capital. So by asking for 14% here, we can build in some potential margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. For Atmos Energy, they've seen their returns on capital decline over this time. Over the last 12 months, they're at about 4.5% returns on capital. So this has been a pretty steady decline since 2017. And over this time, they've been earning below average returns on capital. So they're averaged out, they're only earning about 6.4% returns on capital which are well below that 14% mark we're looking for here and are even slightly below average. So this is gonna be an X to start off on metric number one. As a fully regulated utility, we didn't come into this expecting them to earn extraordinary returns on capital, but it is disappointing to see here that the business is actually earning below average returns on capital. Metric number two, we're taking a high level overview of the cash coming into the business. We want their revenues, earnings, and free cash flows to have grown over the past five years. This metric is all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up for a check, or if even one of these is down, this metric will be an X. So Atmos Energy has experienced revenue growth. They've also grown their net incomes. However, their free cash flows are down as they've had to spend a lot on CapEx in the business as a regulated utility company. They also had this $2.4 billion change in other net operating assets that affected their cash from operations in 2021. So to dig in and understand the business better here, you would want to understand what that change pertains to. 
Either way, their cash flows are going to be down. And so this is going to be an X on metric number two. For metric number three here, we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the company, and we're looking at the business on a per share basis. This metric is going to build off of the previous metric where we saw their earnings increase. Here, we're looking for earnings per share growth over the past five years. And indeed, we're seeing just this. However, it's worth pointing out that their earnings per share have not grown as fast as their earnings have over this time. So what this is signaling to us is that over this time frame, Atmos Energy has been diluting shareholders and digging into their per share metrics. Atmos Energy has diluted existing shareholders by 27% over the last five years alone. So that's quite a bit of shareholder dilution. And we don't like to see that as long term shareholders in a business. Because when you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that underlying business. And so when a business issues new shares and dilutes existing shareholders, they're decreasing your ownership percentage in the company, which is ultimately going to decrease the percentage of the business's profits that you're going to be entitled to. So even though we're seeing earnings per share growth here, and this is going to be our first check on metric number three, we don't like the shareholder dilution that we're seeing here over this time from Atmos Energy. So, so far, we are one for three through our first three metrics. Metric number four is going to be very similar. Here, we're looking for five-year free cash flow per share growth. Again, their free cash flows are down over this time, and they've diluted existing shareholders. Their free cash flows are down at a rate that's faster than that. So, their free cash flows per share are also going to be down. Again, they had this additional charge flow through their earnings statement in 2021. And so, that's something you would want to learn more about if you're interested in this business. So this is going to be an X here on metric number four. And through four metrics, we've still only got the one check. Metric number five, typically here we want to see their net debt, which is long and short term liabilities minus cash and short term investments be below the amount of free cash flow that the business has produced in the past five years. For Atmos Energy here, because they're a regulated utility, we're going to be using their net income instead of their free cash flows. So at the end of last year and currently, they have about $7.5 billion of net debt. So this is their amount of debt left over after subtracting all of their cash. And over the past five years, again, we're using their earnings here instead of their free cash flows. They've earned $2.8 billion. That's well below what their net debt position is currently. And so this is going to be an Exxon metric number five. Utilities are typically going to have higher levels of debt than other businesses, especially relative to their cash flows due to them being regulated entities. While their debt load is high relative to their earnings, it's not egregious. There are behind the scenes dynamics here going on for Atmos Energy. By no means am I an expert on regulated utilities, but if you're interested in Atmos Energy and you're considering learning more about the company, that is something you would really want to dig into and understand in more depth here. Again, through our first five metrics, we've only got one check so far. Finally, the big metric of them all, metric number six, we want their average earnings to their total enterprise value to give us a yield above 5%. If this is the case, this will give us a potential reason to be interested in the company because it'll give us a slight risk premium to the risk-free rate of the 10-year treasury. We learned that over the past five years, Atmos Energy has earned $2.8 billion, which means that in an average year, they're earning about $560 million. When we divide their $560 million of earnings by their $22 billion total enterprise value, that is going to give us an average earnings to enterprise value yield of just about 2.5%. So that's half of the 5% metric we're looking for, and that's below the rate of the 10-year treasury here. So this is going to be an X on metric number six. Also worth understanding here is that over the last 12 months, Atmos Energy has earned $750 million. So to get a current earnings yield, when we divide their $750 million of their last 12 months of earnings by their $22 billion total enterprise value, then that is going to give us a 3.4% current earnings to enterprise value yield. So that's still just a bit below where the 10-year treasury is at, but that's closer to being comparable here. Then finally, the reason we were looking at Atmos Energy is because they are a dividend aristocrat. Here we're taking a look at their dividend profile. So Atmos Energy has increased their dividend payments for each of the past 35 years. However, it's important to understand the fundamentals of a business and make sure that their dividends are well supported by either the company's earnings or free cash flows, depending on the company, because it's really easy to make mistakes by blindly chasing dividend yield or blindly chasing dividend track records. As certain incentives can cause havoc on management, especially how they approach capital allocation and whether they're able to stay objective about it or not. For Atmos Energy here, no surprise, they've increased their dividends per share in all five years. This is good considering that they diluted shareholders by 27% here. 
At the same time, they've also increased their earnings per share over this time, and they've been able to well support their dividend payments with their earnings. They pretty much kept their dividend payout ratio below 50%. We typically want a business to be keeping that below 60%, so that's excellent here. And if this informs us in any way of how the business will fare into the future, then it looks like as the business is able to keep increasing their earnings, they will keep being able to increase their dividends and have room to be able to support future dividend growth. So in summary, Atmos Energy Corporation checks the box on one out of six metrics. They are a fully regulated gas utility company. So they're actually earning slightly below average returns on capital that have dropped over the past five years. While their revenues and their earnings are up, the business's free cash flows are down due to CapEx expenses and an unusual charge passing through their cash flow statement. Again, you'll want to read through the business's filings to understand that better. Even though they've diluted shareholders by 27% over this time, their earnings per share are up. However, their free cash flows per share are down. Comparing their earnings to both the company's leverage and their total enterprise value currently, then it looks like the company is overly levered compared to businesses that we typically want to see. As mentioned, there are industry and regulation dynamics here because they are a regulated utility. So that's not as concerning as what we would see in some other businesses. But then relative to their total enterprise value currently, the business does not look like it's giving us an attractive risk premium to the 10-year treasury right now. So it doesn't look like based at their current prices that there would be a potential margin of safety in this company. Finally, looking at their dividend profile, it does look like they're going to be able to sustain their dividend track record as they were conservatively paying out their dividends in relation to their earnings and they were able to grow their earnings over this time frame. So keep in mind that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered financial and legal professionals. This analysis instead serves as a beginning holistic fundamental understanding of Atmos Energy to help you determine whether it's worth your time to dig in and learn more about the company here. If you're interested in learning more about Atmos Energy, I would highly recommend reading through their 10Ks to get a history of the business and their operating results. The 10K will also lay out potential risks that the company faces, as well as providing management commentary on the challenges and opportunities that the business are presented with, which can help you get an understanding of both the character and competence of management, especially when it comes to capital allocation. When you're done with that, I would also recommend reading through the company's 10Qs and reading through some of their recent earnings call transcripts to get a more up-to-date understanding of the business in their dynamic and changing environment, especially with the prices of oil and natural gas going up worldwide. As a value investor, you ultimately want to research a business as if you own 100% of it, and you can come to understand the essence of the company and learn all of its ins and outs and know what's truly important and what doesn't matter for the business. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Atmos Energy Corporation, ticker symbol ATO. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Atmos Energy with me today, and have a great day.